there's, there's certainly a lot of money that can be saved, and um, that, that'll, this will be a challenge that the, that the next president and the next Congress will have to do. Critics of the Obama administration say it's passing the buck on America's $590 billion deficit. The CBO, Congressional Budget Office, forecasting 33% increase by the end of this year. The author of the Simpson Bowles plan, former Republican senator from Wyoming, Alan Simpson, is with me now. Senator, great to have you here. You were appointed by the president in 2010. You co chaired the Commission on Fiscal Responsibility and Reform. Everyone pretty much agreed on both sides of the aisle that your plan was the best. So how come it wasn't implemented? Well, how are you anyway? Nice <laughs> to hear you. <laughs> it You're like, oh, yeah, that. All that work I did, everybody said was great yeah. and then ignored. Great. Well, I'm part of the master of lost causes. I was on the Iraq study group, and we gave a nice plan there, and nobody used it, and then they finally did. This is like a stink bomb in a garden party. It's not going to go away, but the really reality of it is is everybody ran from it because we hit everybody. That was our intent. You can't get there without hitting everything. You have to do the entitlement reform. You have to do tax reform. You have to do Social Security solvency. You play with those babies on the AARP and senior groups, and every group will tear your shorts so off. So you offended I mean, everybody equally, Senator. It, it was, that was our intent. And, okay. that, and it's a 67-page report in English, and it uses phrases like going broke and shared sacrifice. And we got five Dems, five Republicans, one independent, ranging from Dick Durbin to Tom Coburn. How can you do any better than that and everybody nope. just took to the exits. So just to remind people so they are as incensed as supporters of yours myself included are it would have basically reduced the deficit I took notes uh, at that time by four trillion dollars so you would have helped out a lot of people's grandkids who are walking around today. Well, the, the trouble we found is people don't understand the difference between the deficit and the debt. The deficit was about 1.4 when we got into it, and then it went down. Now it's headed back up from this, and now up a third. And they're talking about the budget reform and all this stuff. Nobody's getting anything done because they're not talking about two-thirds of the national budget, which is health care. Forget the nastiness of the word Obamacare. Health care and the solvency of Social Security are eating up two-thirds of the budget. You don't dare touch it because of the power of the senior groups. The most selfish group in America, I found, and I'm one of them, I guess. I mean, I put in Social Security when I was 15 at the Cody Bakery. I get 3300 a month. I would got to put it in when I was in the Army. I mean, it was a deal. You know, you died at 63 and you retired at 65. That's a pretty good deal. Now you're going to live to be 80 and you can still retire at 62. Give me a break. Let's quit using use your brain. What is the worst case scenario? I want to ask you that, Senator. And then what is at this juncture, aside from adopting your plan or a, an updated version of it, would be the next best thing to do, no matter who is the next president? Well, no matter who's the next president is having a dump job of the most extraordinary event. And that's what this thing to, what Clinton or that Obama said today, or it, this is the most cynical thing like, well, OK, the deficit is going to go up. We kind of knew that. We do know that the debt went up for under us, under Obama, from 10.5 trillion to 20 trillion yeah. in his eight years. Now, I mean, it's doubled. Yes, you can't you can't just throw that out. And and the cynicism of the man, he just didn't get anything done. He didn't get Guantanamo. He didn't get immigration. He did a war on coal. He got Libya off the rail. Afghanistan, Iraq gave away all the ships and Iran. I mean, the guy guy is a failure, and he's spending his time in these last months desperately trying to establish his legacy, which is going to be, <laughs> well, it will be, hopefully in my lifetime, will be thoroughly assessed. But you can't, you can't fool the American people. This, the next president is going to wander into the most horrible abyss 
of, of debt and deficit. And there is a tipping point, and it's when people who've loaned us $20 trillion bucks say, we want more money for our money. You have a dysfunctional government. Everybody will admit that. You, you're addicted to debt, and we want more money for our money. And guess what? Interest will kick up to historical places like 5% instead of zero or mm-hmm. one or two. And inflation will kick in, and the guy that gets screwed is the little guy. What a country. Yeah. Well, I sincerely hope, although I'm kind of frightened because since you're an expert, chances are you are not wrong. I hope there's an X factor in there. But I want to get back to something that you said on health care because we want to remind everyone this is what President Obama said when he took office about Obamacare and then when it was introduced. Here's his comment. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, You will be able to keep your health care plan, period. So you can keep your doctor, President Obama's signature phrase, but now it seems that the Obamacare website has removed these guarantees. Is that a step in the right direction as far as controlling costs? This has proven to be a much more complicated uh, system than I think most people even anticipated. (laughs) You can just say what he just said was a lie, period. He could add that, put a period behind that. It was all a smoke job. Even people have admitted that they, they gimmicked it. It was the only piece of legislation I have ever dealt with in all my years, 18 in the Senate, that never had a vote from the opposite party. You cannot have a piece of legislation that is steamrolled, whether it would be the Hubs or the Democrats, that never had a single vote from the opposition party and hope that it would ever work for the good of the people, period. Because there's no buy-in. No, I mean, you can't. I mean, look what the drug companies are doing. I mean, what and what are they doing? Well, go back to the pharmacy bill. There's a real job right there, and that was under a previous administration. Don't just lay it uh, This, This is the most extraordinary. The insurers, the the. the, the Medications that cost three, four, five, six thousand bucks a crack, uh, the asthma thing just recently, right. and, and 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 why is it happening? Is because the insurers, you know, the guys think, hey, what the hell do I care? I, I'm insured, right. but but let me tell you, uh, there is a moment of reckoning, and the open, open reckoning is the tipping point when nobody's going to sit still. Somebody said, well, debt doesn't mean anything. I said. Well, it does for the guys who've loaned you the money. It certainly does. Senator Alan Simpson, what a pleasure. Come back, sir. We love clarity. Thank you, Deirdre. (laughs) Senator, thank you. Bye.